right, guys, I'm excited to welcome in Scott to the Just Get Hired podcast. It has been a long time coming. We have been planning this for like almost a year or so, Scott. Is that right? I don't know. It's close. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to our conversation because we're talking about cover letters, ditch it or fix it. There's like a lot of discussion going on LinkedIn and it's causing quite the conundrum, don't you think? I, I do. Hopefully we can kind of talk through this. I know a lot of recruiters might have a different thought and different opinions about cover letters, uh, but in the end, hopefully we can bring it all together and dispel any type of myth that might be out there, whether you have one or you don't. Well, I think I'm in the category of the ones that probably don't really give a crap when it comes to cover letters because I feel it's a waste of my time. Now, I know that we're going to debate this because we have, you know, different viewpoints about this topic. And that's why I love that we're talking about this. So with all of the different automated resume screaming, all of the different applicant tracking systems, do you think cover letters still carry weight in today's job market? In the grand scheme of things, I feel like they do. I believe that as a person that is trying to pursue a position and put their best foot forward, they need to make sure that all of the boxes are checked. And that would include the cover letter. So Jessica may or may not like to read a cover letter. However, we don't know who wants to look at a cover letter. So as a result, we need to make sure that we give them everything that they may want or not want. It's very simple. Sure. So when you upload your resume to um, a job announcement, that's fine. But then separately upload your cover letter as a different document and then allow that recruiter to decide whether they want to review it or not review it. Um, I had once had a recruiter tell me that they kind of break it down in this format. 33% of recruiters could care less about a cover letter. 33% of recruiters would like to read a cover letter, then look at your resume. And then the final 33% would want to look at your resume. If they're intrigued, then they'll go back and look at your cover letter, which then tells us about 50% or 60% of the time an individual will want to see that type of a document. So in the grand scheme of things, as a career coach, I highly recommend that you go ahead and you put one together because it tells the untold story, which hopefully we'll be able to talk about. That's true. Well, I guess I do read them sometimes, but when you have a lot of people who are applying for a job, it's kind of difficult to go through all of the cover letters. So I guess I do look at some of them. I'm pretty selective when it comes to it, but the longer the cover letter, the less interested I am. So I kind of just glance over it. So I guess then my theory of not really wanting to look at a cover letter is false because you're right. I do. I fall in that category of people who actually will look at it. But not, I won't read all of them. Yeah. So, I mean, with that said, we still want to make this document easy to read. We maybe want to pull it in bullet points. So the idea is the first paragraph is how you heard about the opportunity, whether it's on LinkedIn, Indeed, the company website. Maybe you were referred to the position. In that case, then you would drop the name of the individual that referred you to the opportunity, which could be a selling point. The second and third paragraph would be how you're qualified for the job. And then above and beyond that, showing the organization that you've done your research on them and how you are a cultural fit into what it is that they're looking for in a candidate. And then that Final paragraph is a real quick, here's how I plan on following up, here's how excited I am about it, and here's how you can reach out to me. So I, I totally agree. We don't want to make this long-winded. We don't want to make this difficult to read, short, quick hits of information, 
And then the other thing as well is if there's things that the company is asking for that you might not be able to put in mm -hmm. your resume, the cover letter is a great place to address that. Or if you might have some sort of barrier to employment, like maybe a, a, a gap in your work history or frequently moving around, maybe job hopping, this is a great place to address mm. those concerns yeah. that the recruiter might have to give them that sort of that, aha, now I understand, now I still want to talk to that person. Okay, well, that's good points there. Do you think that certain industries or job roles have a stronger insistence on cover letters than others? It's a great question. Uh, I would say there's probably a differentiation between them, but overall, mm -hmm. as somebody who's trying to find, find a job and someone that is trying to beat their competition, and my recommendation mm -hmm. is I would just give it and let that organization or industry decide whether they want it or not. But it's just an option. It's an addition. Um, and then above and right. beyond that, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, so be it. Um, less is more. You know, I, I really want you or individuals that are looking for a job not to focus on spraying and praying for jobs, but really focus on an opportunity, consolidate how you're going to apply for that position. And if that means mm -hmm. putting together an effective cover letter, then you need to do it. If that means reaching out to the recruiter or somebody that works for that organization, you need to do it. Um, but, but it's just an additional step that I think is necessary. Yeah, I think for maybe director level roles and above, it sh should be something that you should at least put together. But for, you know, maybe hourly positions, it doesn't really make sense. Um, or even some manager level positions, maybe. Um, but so do cover letters actually give us insight into a candidate's personality and um, passion that's in their resume? Or what other suggestions do you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm going to throw this back at you real quick. So if you're looking at a resume and okay. you see a bunch of soft skills, do you tend to gloss over them? Mm, sometimes. Sometimes I do. Okay. Okay. So my, my additional thought is I love soft skills, but I want individuals to use unique soft skills. And not necessarily say I'm self-motivated, team player. Mm, okay. You know, all those different things that everybody uses, right? But if you find a unique type of soft skill, maybe you incorporate that into the resume, but by incorporating it into the cover letter could be a way to define who you are as a person a little bit more than who you are as a professional, which is right. mainly what we look for in a resume. Yeah, I think some of the times the soft skills I glance over because it's just like fluffy words on a resume. But yes. if you can actually provide good examples, then I think that makes a huge difference. Well, are there any cool alternative ways maybe applicants can showcase their skills and enthusiasm without sticking to the traditional cover letter format like you outlined? I, now we're trickling into sort of like the LinkedIn aspect of things, I think. Okay, yeah. And creating engagement and recognition through the different um, types of ways that you are communicating with other types of professionals. So that way, when you do reach out to a recruiter and it's sort of blind, that they can go look at your profile and see, wow, this person is really engaged. They're really into the industry that I am hiring for. Yes, this is the person that I would love to talk to. Um, that's probably the alternative to put together some sort of a cover letter. Absolutely. Yeah. Mind. I mean, every, well, a lot of candidates probably don't realize this, but managers are looking at your profile before you even talk to them, either on video or on the phone. And so, Personal branding is huge. I know you talk about 
personal branding a lot and LinkedIn profiles a lot with uh, what you do during the day um, with your clients. And I just feel like people miss that aspect and they're just looking at the cover letter as a way in. But another way in is to grab the attention by making sure your profile and your messaging that you have on LinkedIn is like top notch, right? Exactly. I loved how you mentioned the word me um, messaging. I, I think that's really important is to make sure that your message is out there. Uh, so that way, when a recruiter like yourself and just out of curiosity, do you look at the activity of a potential um, applicant and see what they're engaged in on the platform on LinkedIn? And does that kind of serve as maybe a cover letter or help you get a deeper dive into who they are as a professional and a person? I mean, actually, yes and no. I guess it depends on the role that we're um, looking to hire a person we're trying to bring in. I like to see, especially for higher level roles, uh, you know, their level of engagement, what are they posting about? Are they commenting? Do they seem like an authority in what they're talking about? Um, how are they coming across? What are some of the uh, things that they're interacting with? Who are the types of people that they're interacting with as well? Um, and that kind of gives me a sense of the type of person they are before I actually give them a call. So sometimes to me, that replaces the cover letter because I've already kind of done my research on the back end to understand who I'm about to present to the hiring manager, as well as who I'm about to speak to on the phone. So I guess it just depends um, on that. The holistic approach would be the resume, the LinkedIn profile, potentially the cover letter. And I think if people cut corners in all of these different aspects of looking for employment and trying to market themselves or brand themselves, they're, they're totally missing out. And I, you know, I, I just see so many people that complain on the platform that they've applied for a hundred types of jobs, but they're not doing all the back end work that is necessary to be recognized. And it goes back to that spray and pray approach. You're, it's not going to get mm -hmm. you anywhere. You got to you got to do a holistic approach to looking for employment. Absolutely. Well, I think your dog has something else to say about this topic. <laughs> I think so too. I, I realized. You know, like, Wait a minute. You know that's a whole different. <laughs> hey, we include the whole family in this conversation. Um, but yes, networking is definitely a part of it. Cover letters is just a very small percentage of the actual job process. I think one mistake that candidates also have is that they use the same cover letter for every job that they apply to, and they're not making it more personal to the actual job itself. So um, any comments or thoughts about that? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and, so and, and the dog is barking. Um, it, it's sort of <laughs> the same thing with doing the resume. You need to tailor everything to match up to the position that you're applying for. I always tell my clients, I want you to make the recruiter's job easier, right? Right. And what does that mean? Like that means putting yourself in their shoes, giving them exactly what it is potentially that they're looking for to make their job easier to define you as the best candidate moving forward. And that's tailoring your cover letter. It's tailoring your resume. It's making sure that if you reach out on LinkedIn, that it's a personalized approach. You're not diving in for the ask right away. You're creating a relationship. And then from there, you move into the ask as to what you want. Well, Scott, so overall on this hot take, Cover letters to you, are, is it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I think it's a thumbs up. While, okay. it, um, while it may not be something you want to do, it's extra work. I think in the long run, it can only help you and you need to do it. Um, so there's this 
50% it's a waste of time, 50% it's advantageous. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I would lean towards that cup half full and give them exactly what they might want versus not giving them what they may want. Well, on this topic, I appreciate it. So Scott, thank you for your hot take. I love it. Thank you for having me. And I'm so glad we finally were able to do this. Hot takes are quick episodes, getting hot takes on hot topics about things that are trending in the workplace today. And these episodes are going to continue to pop up. You can listen to them on your favorite podcast platform, or you can watch the videos on Spotify or on YouTube. So if you're ready to spice up your life and your career, don't forget to visit thespicygnome.com and then head over to my website, justgethired.com, which has all the details about who I am, what I do, and the guests that I've had on my show. Well, if you like my content, don't forget to follow me, connect with me, and network with me on LinkedIn by searching my full name, Jessica Fiesta George, and then also head over to Instagram and follow me there, Just Get Hired. Well, my name is Jessica Fiesta George, your host of the Just Get Hired podcast. What do y'all want to talk about next? I'll catch you on my next episode.